I'm now on the Timeline panel in the Chrome Developer Tools. And the Timeline panel is used to measure refresh rates, memory used, have a look at how long events take to fire and things like that. Now, as it stands at the moment, we've got nothing on the timeline because I haven't recorded anything. So we'll take a look at just some of the features that we can see first, and then we'll record some activity on the screen so we can see some of the statistics that the Chrome developer tools give us. So first of all, we have the record button on the left hand side, and that's what we use to actually start recording some of the events. Next one is clear when we want to clear everything off, and then we have a filter button. So if we give this a click, it then shows us four options, painting, rendering, scripting, and loading. And you can see we've got different color codes and you'll see those appear in the timeline. So I'm gonna keep that on for now. Next, we have this little garbage collector and then some other bits and pieces that's gonna be shown as we move on. Then on the right hand side, where we have the actual timeline, we have these two horizontal lines. We have 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second. And this allows us to see a visual representation of how long the different activities, the different rendering and painting of the screen elements takes. Now this is quite important for the user experience. If elements of our screen are being repainted below 60 frames a second, then that's not a great thing. It's not a good user experience because you'll see flickering on the screen. Objects are being repainted and you'll see that visually. It's best to keep things above 60 frames per second, which is the usual monitor refresh rate of users. So everything seems to flow nice and fluidly. So let's start by doing a recording. So all I need to do is click record and then it's recording everything on the screen. You can see events being recorded down here and it's building this timeline and as I scroll up and down the screen it'll record different things. I can mouse over elements and different activities will be recorded on our timeline. When we want to stop we just click the record button again and that's it. We can now look at the timeline and analyze some of the different bits of activity that have been carried out. Now if you look on the top where we have the 30 frames per second you can see these 60 frames per second has disappeared because nothing is actually reaching, reaching that point for what we are focused on at the moment. You'll see here we're actually focusing right at the start when we started recording. If I drag this bar to the right, then I am bringing more things into view below. If I go all the way to the right, then that covers the whole timeline that we were looking at. Now, if we want to focus on the specific time within our recording, we can just click different elements of this timeline chart and we will jump to the individual events that appear in that specific piece of time. So as you can see here, if I click on this one, we had some mouse over events, mouse move events. We were painting to the screen and so on. If we turn off some of these filter settings, then that's gonna reduce what we see on the screen here. So if we turn off scripting, we can then see in this specific time piece or time element that I'm showing, there were only two painting activity elements that appear. We have paint and we have composite layer. And a mouse over then brings up further information in a little pop-up box showing us different pieces of information. Now, let's clear this off and what we'll do we'll do another recording but to try and get a bit more information let's add some css that tries to invoke a lot of repainting on the screen so i'm going to go over well i'll turn filters off first i'll go over to elements and i'm going to add some css to this web page to give us some shadows and things like that try and make a lot of visual activity start happening on the screen so at the moment, let's have a look. Okay, we're hovering over this Newsstand Magazine course link. So let's change that. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is put in a one second transition. So we'll add that. And then what I'll do, I'll come over to this button here, the toggle element state button. And then I'll add some code specifically for the hover action. Okay, so I'll give that a click and now we can see we're working specifically 
when we mouse over any anchor text. So what I'm going to do is add in some box shadow. Then we'll say 90 pixels and then let's choose this red color that we have here. So we'll choose the HC1000. And then we'll also add some text shadow as well. We won't make this one quite as big. Let's make it 60 pixels and we'll choose a nice simple gray color, I think. That will do. So now we can see we've got this shadow effect appearing when we hover over. So if I take this off, go over, mouse over it, then we can see the shadow action appearing. So it's doing a one second transition to this box shadow and text shadow. So that will hopefully start registering a lot more activity on the screen. And because I did it for all anchor text, anything that has that is going to get that shadow effect. So we should have lots of things going on in the screen. So now back over to the timeline, we'll start recording and then let's see what happens. So recording's on, I'm now mousing over and you can see there's a lot more activity going on the screen. Fantastic. So let's stop recording and now we can have a look at this chart in a bit more detail. So if I give it a click, we can see we have this 60 frames per second, we have the 30 frames per second. So we have lots of um, repainting going on that's go dropping below 30 frames a second, which is not a great experience for the user. The actual refresh rate of our monitors are a lot faster than this. So this transition effect isn't such a great effect. And if you've got a designer that's asked for some you know, fancy transitions like this, obviously not with my, uh, my artwork there, but if somebody does ask for that and then you do some analysis and see that it's taking a long time to redraw, it's taken a lot of resource, then you can have words and actually say, no, let's not do that, let's do it a different way. So now let's come back down to this filter. If we just want to focus on painting, we can turn off rendering, scripting and loading. There we can see our painting activity that's going on on the, on the screen. Focus on rendering. You can see lots going on there. Now I don't want to go into too much more detail here on the timeline panel, but I will just say that you can focus specifically on events on the page and also on memory management. You can see what effect the repainting, the rendering, scripting and loading has on the actual memory management of the web page. Here you can see when we go on it, it gives you a scale here showing you the minimum and maximum amount of memory being used on your page. And you can see the peaks and the troughs and things like that. So you can have a look at your timeline and determine which parts of your rendering are taking up too much memory and so on. 